Hi, Watershed Watch participants. Let's join Boise Watershed Education Manager, Cindy Bush, as she talks a little bit about water management on the Boise River. Hi, I'm Cindy Bush, the Education Manager at the Boise Watershed. I'm standing at the base of Lucky Peak Dam to talk to you about water management in the Treasure Valley. At Lucky Peak, that is the dividing line between our upper Boise River watershed and the lower Boise River watershed. Upstream, a lot of precipitation in the form of snow melts each year and really provides the source of our water here in the Boise River. At dams like Lucky Peak, we manage the water and allow the flow to be a little more continuous throughout the year. With that flow of water, we can do many things with it, from irrigating farmland to using it in our cities to provide drinking water for thousands of people. In addition, we have a fishery with cold water fish up and down the river. We also use that water for many different reasons, such as recreation. How many of you have ever floated the Boise River in the summer? Today, our water users in the valley have to work together more than ever in order to manage this water and ensure there's a clean, adequate supply for all those different uses now and into the future. The need for water management in the Treasure Valley was really driven by irrigation. In the 1860s, with the discovery of gold in the Boise Valley, thousands of miners came out to the Treasure Valley and seek a fortune. The farmers rushed in to help meet the needs of their demand for food. Farmers at that time could only divert water from the Boise River along land that was adjacent to the river. By the 1870s, the farmland was pretty well established, but only along the river. There was a need to irrigate the desert in order to provide more food for our growing cities and our growing population. In 1902, the Reclamation Service was formed and that brought federal funding for projects such as Diversion Dam, which you can see behind me. Diversion Dam raises the Boise River about 68 feet high so that it can be diverted into the New York Canal. The New York Canal is our longest canal in the Treasure Valley, stretching more than 40 miles as water is fed through a system of laterals out to thousands of acres of farmland in the valley. Ultimately, that water flows into Lake Lowell and fills that lake. The New York Canal flows more water down it than the actual main stem of the Boise River in the summer. The water that flows down the New York Canal goes out to thousands of acres of farmland where it's used, then collected, and distributed back to the Boise River through return agricultural canals. Those canals tend to meet the river just below Middleton, and that influences the water quality in the reaches of the river that flows through Nampa, Caldwell, and Parma. In those areas, we see warmer, more nutrient-rich water as a result of our upstream activities. In 1909, just as Diversion Dam was being completed, a second site was being explored for a dam upstream. It later became Arrow Rock Dam, which opened in 1915. At the time, it was the world's largest dam at 348 feet high, and that was quite an engineering feat. Today, Arrow Rock Dam holds back water to store water for irrigation needs, as well as generates hydropower and provides a recreation opportunity. The water in Lucky Peak Lake behind me is fed from the upstream dams from Arrow Rock as well as Anderson Ranch Dam, located more than 50 miles upstream of here. Lucky Peak Lake is formed by Lucky Peak Dam, which was the last dam to be built in our watershed in 1955 by the Army Corps of Engineers. It was primarily built for flood control as well as holding back water for irrigation storage. Today, it's also a wonderful place to recreate, as you can see behind me. The four major dams in our Boise River watershed are jointly managed by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, the Boise Project Board of Control, and the Army Corps of Engineers. They manage primarily to ensure the health and safety of our water users downstream to prevent flooding, as well as for irrigation purposes and hydropower. It is important now more than ever that 
that they work together in order to meet the demands of the water users or stakeholders in the Treasure Valley. A stakeholder is anyone who has an interest or a stake in our water. A stakeholder can be a group, a business, a government agency, and even people throughout our watershed. Water management in the Treasure Valley is becoming more challenging as the demand for water increases. In addition, our water quality, quantity, and timing of runoff is changing due to the impacts of climate change. It'll be important now and into the future that the water managers work together and adapt their strategies to meet the needs of all of the stakeholders.